So it's late 2022 and I'm at our local guitar center because they finally got one of the new Kramer Strikers in. Being generally interested in Kramer guitars, I want to try one of these out for myself. So I was constantly looking at Guitar Center's site to see when they had one in stock. Which brings me to now, when I finally found out they got one in. Hi, excuse me, you seem to have a guitar in stock on the website in the store, but I can't find it on the shelf. Certainly, let me ask my associate here. Yes, what is it? This customer, she's looking for a guitar that we had in stock online. Well, did she look on the shelf? Yes, but it's it's probably in the back. Okay, well, if it's in the back, then it's not going to be tuned or set up or anything. That's okay, I can set it up and tune it myself if you just give me a tuner. Aaliyah, can you go back and look there for a second? Fine. Ugh. A few moments later. Here's the guitar, you better like it. Meanwhile, the guitar isn't even set up or anything. It's literally just bone stock from the factory. I take about 15 minutes to tune the thing, and because I can't get in the rear cavity and set up the Floyd the way it needs to be, I decide I no longer want to play it. Because who wants to play a guitar that hasn't been set up at all, other than, like, most of the people walking into Guitar Center? So I return the guitar to the counter and grab some strings from the rack, and Bitch Face goes, So are you gonna buy the guitar? And I just say, no, not today. And she literally starts muttering to herself and angrily putting the guitar back in the box as if I'm the bad guy now for not wanting to buy a guitar that I had to set up with no tools that played like absolute shit. I posted the guitar up on my Instagram and talked about what happened and I told everyone that I set up and what do you know, about a week later I come back and it's gone. <laughs> So this is the new Kramer Striker. I'd actually written off this guitar for a long time after that incident at Guitar Center, and I had told several people that I didn't recommend this guitar. But I figured this guitar deserves a fairer shake than that, especially because it's not the guitar's fault that the person at Guitar Center was a total jerk. So I picked this one up from Zounds and I set it up with EXL 130s and a super low action the same way I do all my other guitars. and. Boy, I was really wrong about this guitar. For a start, I really, really like the body style. It just has this little concave part of it to the upper part of the body that, I don't know, like I really like this proportion. For whatever reason, I also really like the flat tops more than the arch tops. My one big complaint with the aesthetic of this guitar is actually the headstock. I'm not sure why it got its own beak headstock. It's like this fat beak thing. But it just kind of reminds me of that one dude from the Muppets, the one who haunted my dreams, if he had like a little bit wider of a beak. Just like the last Assault 220 I reviewed, this comes with a Floyd Rose Special, and it's like super solid as far as Floyds go. The frets are also a pretty reasonable height too, they're not too tall and they're not too short. Speaking of frets, there are no sharp fret edges on this guy as far as I can tell, which you would come to expect that given that the Beretta Special at almost half the price, at $179, has exceptionally polished frets. The frets also seem to be leveled really well. I did not get any dead frets on this guitar. This Kramer Striker actually has a laurel fretboard, making this variation $399, but the other Kramer Striker that is basically identical to this has a maple fretboard and is $349. I went with this variation just because I sort of like the darker fretboard just for demo purposes, and it kind of matches the aesthetic of the rest of my guitars. So the guitar I'm comparing this one with is one I've been thinking about a lot recently, the Jackson DK. JS32 Dinky Arch Top.
So I figured that these guitars would be kind of an even match because they're going for the same audience at the same price point. With both Fender and Jackson being long established in this design, you'd think all the kinks would be ironed out by now, right? Right? Unfortunately, this Jackson is anything but. Right off the bat, the fret edges are insanely sharp. The fret edges on this guitar are literally as sharp as that $99 Glare guitar I reviewed last year, which they then later went on to overdub the audio on my demo, and then they started using that video as like an ad for pre-rolls before videos, and I get people coming to me non-stop for like, why did they do this? And I'm just like, I don't fucking know. I certainly didn't tell them they could do that. I wanted to be sure that this wasn't just a fluke with this guitar, so I actually went to Guitar Center and finger fucked a bunch of other DK dinkies just like this one. And sure enough, they all had super sharp fret edges just like this one. I really, really wanted to like this guitar, like for the price and everything, like I just thought it looked sick. I gave the Jackson a full setup just like I did the Kramer. I put my that area EXL 130s on here and I had to do a truss rod adjustment, which is why you see the truss rod cover off on both of these guitars. Unfortunately, I discovered that there's several dud frets up on the higher frets in this guitar. I think there's more than those, but I had to raise the action so high just to ensure that the guitar was playable, which as a result, makes this guitar really shitty to play. As if it can't get any worse, something is really wrong with the licensed Floyd on this Jackson, and I'm not sure if that's just because it is a licensed Floyd or some other sort of manufacturing issue, but it literally will not consistently reset to any one tuning at all. It resets to like one of three or four different tunings, depending on how I hit the whammy bar. <laughs> It's almost like a worn knife edge issue, but it's literally a brand new guitar, so that shouldn't be the case. So I'm just not sure what's going on there. I've played quite a few guitars with Floyds and I've never had one with a Floyd as wonky as this one. It literally treats tuning like me trying to pick an outfit on date night. If we're talking about just the Nux alone, I way prefer the Kramer for the slight C shape that has going on, the thickness, it's like way thinner than the Jackson, as well as like the lacquer on the back. Like the Jackson has barely any lacquer. It literally feels like you're touching a bare piece of wood, which is, I that might be intentional, but it doesn't feel as smooth as the lacquer on the back of the Kramer. There's gonna be a lot of people who are like, oh my god, Kayla's such a Kramer fangirl. But y'all need to remember, I literally started out on a Jackson solos, and I played that guitar for like 10 out of the 13 years that I played guitar. And I thought I was gonna be a Jackson fangirl for life, but like, didn't turn out that way. So for your $350, you're way better off getting a new Kramer Striker. I'm telling you, it's objectively a better guitar, Go play the two, go try it out from Zounds. It's a superior guitar in every way, and you should absolutely give Kramer a chance with this guitar. The Kramer Striker with the maple fretboard is 350 bucks at Zounds right now, and the Kramer Striker with the laurel fretboard, like you see here, is 399 at Zounds right now. Not only does using my affiliate link with Zounds help me out like a ton, but they also have a very generous 45 day return policy. So if you're not happy for any reason, you can return it. On top of that, they have like this really unprecedented no credit check financing on most of their guitars, including this one. You can literally pay for this thing in payments with no credit needed and it's crazy. They also don't spam you with telemarketing calls after you make a purchase, which is a pretty big bonus.